Hi, my name is Libby and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. In this lesson, we will be discussing the causes, diagnosis, treatments, and prognosis of amblyopia, a childhood vision development disorder. First, we will define amblyopia and then briefly review normal visual development. Next, we will discuss the causes of amblyopia. And finally, we'll talk about the evaluation and treatment of amblyopia as well as a general prognosis for children with this condition. Amblyopia is when the vision in one or both eyes does not develop properly during childhood, resulting in decreased vision that cannot be corrected with glasses or contacts. It is also referred to as lazy eye and affects 2-5% to of the population. It's most often unilateral, but can be bilateral as well. The critical period of visual development occurs from birth to around seven to eight years of age. During this time, if amblyopia is detected, there is still an opportunity for the child to regain vision with appropriate treatment. For this reason, it is critical for ophthalmologists and primary care physicians to be familiar with the classic presenting signs, symptoms, and causes of this condition. Children with amblyopia can have decreased visual acuity, poor contrast sensitivity, hand-eye coordination, and spatial localization. We'll talk about how this happens in the next slide. At birth, infants have blurry vision, which then improves as the child grows and develops connections between the eyes and the brain. Normally, after a visual stimulus reaches the retina in the back of the eye, the signal travels from the retina to the optic nerve, and then it goes to project to the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus. There, neurons in the LGN travel to the primary visual cortex in the occipital lobe as shown here. Most of the structures involved in this pathway are constructed before birth. However, as we grow, these connections in the pathway are still forming during the critical period. If there is an interruption anywhere in this pathway, the connections between the eye and the brain do not develop properly and vision may be decreased despite a normal structural appearance of the eye. There are three main causes of amblyopia. The most common cause is strabismus, when the eyes are misaligned and this represents approximately half of all cases. Refractive error accounts for 15 to 20% of amblyopia cases and happens when there is a large or unequal amount of refractive error between the two eyes. Finally, deprivation amblyopia, which is the least common type, occurs when there is something physically blocking the vision. Strabismus describes the eyes when they are not straight and instead pointing in two different directions. The eyes may be misaligned vertically, horizontally, obliquely, or in a combination. In this picture, the child's right eye is turned in, called esotropia, and in this picture, this child's eye is turned out, called exotropia. Because the eyes are misaligned, the brain receives two unfusible images, so it turns off or ignores the eye that isn't straight to avoid seeing double. Refractive amblyopia happens when there is either a large amount of refractive error in both eyes or if there is an unequal amount of refractive error between the two eyes, a condition called anisometropia. Significant myopic, hyperopic, or astigmatic refractive error prevents light from being focused on the retina, resulting in a blurry image viewed by the affected eye like what is happening with the soccer ball in this image. Over time, the brain will learn to ignore the eye with the blurry image and favor making connections to the eye with the clear image, resulting in unilateral refractive amblyopia. More rarely, this can be a bilateral process due to high refractive error in both eyes. This type of amblyopia is the most difficult to diagnose as the eyes appear structurally normal and can go undiagnosed for years until the vision is formally tested. Finally, deprivation amblyopia is the least common and most severe type of amblyopia. This occurs when the visual field in one or both eyes is blocked, reducing the visual signals from the eye to the brain. There are many causes of deprivation amblyopia. For example, eyelid ptosis, or a droopy eyelid as you can see here, corneal scarring from trauma or infection, cataract, which is a lens opacification that can occur from birth or be acquired from a systemic condition or trauma, and vitreous hemorrhage, or bleeding in the back of the eye. Treatment approach to amblyopia is to detect and start treatment as early as possible. The younger the patient is when amblyopia treatment is started, the better their visual prognosis will be. Approach to treatment is always to initiate the most conservative or non-surgical measures first. This includes glasses to correct refractive errors if needed, and patching or atropine penalization. 
For some patients with refractive amblyopia and strabismus, they may only need glasses to improve their vision and reduce amblyopia. Patching of the good eye is meant to train the brain to use the weaker eye to promote development of neural connections and improve vision in that eye. Patching therapy involves placement of a soft eye pad with sticky edges like this on the stronger eye for up to six hours a day. This is done when the child is involved in tasks that require visual attention, so not just while they're watching TV. Patching time can be decreased based on improvement in the vision in that amblyopic eye. Now sometimes patching can be very difficult for the parents or the child, and an eye drop called atropine can be used. This relaxes the eye muscles such that the eye can't focus to see clearly. This can be used in the good eye once daily, so now the image in that weaker eye is clearer, forcing the brain to build connections with that eye. However, this type of treatment doesn't work in some cases, such as if the amblyopia is very severe. If the cause of amblyopia is severe enough, treatment may require surgical intervention. For strabismus, eye muscle surgery can be done to straighten the eyes so the two eyes can work together. For severe cases of deprivation amblyopia, surgery is done to remove the obstacle from the child's vision. For example, cataract surgery to remove a dense cataract or eyelid surgery seen in this picture to the right. After surgery, the child may still need glasses or patching of the good eye to fully treat the amblyopia. For every child with amblyopia, treatment continues until the best possible vision is reached. For some children, this may mean 20-20 vision, but for others, it may not. Some factors associated with better prognosis include, the younger the child is, the better the outcome. Better baseline visual acuity in the amblyopic bad eye is associated with better prognosis. And finally, good compliance with treatment is related to better outcomes. It's very important to continue monitoring children with amblyopia for recurrence, even after treatment is completed. About 25% of children treated for amblyopia experience recurrence after the first year of stopping therapy. However, restarting the previously prescribed treatment can restore visual acuity to its previous level. For some children, amblyopia can't be fully treated. However, even with one good, strong eye, children can still function normally and participate in almost all activities throughout childhood and into adulthood. This concludes the amblyopia lesson. Thanks for listening.